All right, so the public beta is out, which means you can now go ahead and install iOS 16 right now on your phone. But I've been using the developer beta for close to a month, and this is everything new in iOS 16, except for the lock screen. Yep, I've already made like a whole special video about it, which you should check out, because that's a pretty big part of it. But this is everything beyond the lock screen. Okay, I want to start with notifications because that's the first thing that threw me off. Yeah, notifications now appear at the bottom of the screen instead of the top and you have to swipe up on them to reveal more. Yeah, and it's kind of difficult because you also swipe up to unlock. So it's a bit confusing. But what's new is you can now hide all your notifications by swiping down and then down. Yep, and all that clutter goes away. Instead, you get this unread counter that lets you know how many new notifications you have. Yeah, but even after a month, I'm still not sure about all these changes, but it does clean up the lock screen quite a bit. Okay, the next big thing, and probably my favorite, is the new music lock screen. Yeah, you get this beautiful new full screen view when you're playing music. It kind of reminds me of the one time I switched to Apple Music, but this works with anything and everything, like Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, podcasts and even my meditation app yeah like just about any app that uses playback controls now shows up like this yeah so how it works is whenever you play something no matter what lock screen you have the background changes dynamically to match the cover art of whatever you're playing and you can tap on the cover to go back to your lock screen but this is like so good it's way better than what we had before yeah major step up Okay, now the Photos app has got a bunch of new features. First, and really the biggest one, is subject separation. This is where you can tap and hold on the subject in a photo, and it'll remove the background for you. Yeah, and it's pretty impressive and almost instant. And you can see how it tracks the outlines pretty accurately. So what's happening here is it's using machine learning to detect edges and then create a new image without the background. And then you can drop it wherever you want. You can see it's not perfect right now, but it does get it right most of the times. And this works with every photo, whether it's taken on your phone or not. And it's not just for humans or animals. It works wherever it can detect like a clear separation between the subject and the background. So yeah, without a doubt, the most impressive feature in iOS 16. It's like the ultimate party trick. You can now also copy and paste edits between photos. So I can like select all of these and paste edits. Now this is gonna be like a real time saver for when you've got like multiple shots of the same photo. You can also now undo and redo edits with a three finger swipe. Works pretty good. And finally, you can now lock your hidden and deleted photos album with Face ID. Yeah, took them long enough. And also you have duplicates here so you can manage and merge them together with a single click. So yeah, the Photos app keeps getting better and better every year. Yeah, but I cannot wait until they fix those damn sliders. Yeah, like I don't want to use any other Photos app. Okay, live text that came last year also got some updates. First is quick actions that'll scan the image for you and give you actions like phone numbers, conversions, translations. And second is it now works in video. So you can pause and select text inside a video, just like that. Now it does not work in the YouTube app, but you can do it in Safari. Okay, the keyboard. Yes, you can enable haptic feedback in settings and sound. Yeah, it feels really good and accurate, but yeah, I turned it off after like two days. Yeah, I'm even more impressed by the dictation, which now works together with the keyboard, so you can make edits while it's working. Yeah, this makes it really fast and efficient. And I think I'm going to use it a lot more instead of the swiping. Yeah, what I've also found is that these action buttons are now much more pleasant to use and appear automatically whenever you need them. Just a little detail that makes a big difference while you're working. Oh, and another nice detail I've found is when you get this autofill prompt for like one-time passwords, it shows you the exact amount you're being charged along with the code. Okay, moving on to the weather. It looks the same as before, 
but you can now tap on these tiles to get like way more detail and precise data over the next 10 days. Yeah, all of these tiles are now tappable. And with this, the weather app is now officially in a league of its own with the amount of data it provides. Yeah, seriously impressive. Okay, if you watch my video about the new lock screen, you already know that they can now be linked with focus modes. But if you didn't set it all up, it will suggest you different lock screens based on the focus. Like here it is for work. And it'll even suggest home screen pages to go along with just the apps for work. And here it is for sleep. Pretty cool if you don't want to set everything up. Okay, AirPods didn't got much love this year, like before. But there is a new spatial audio update that literally scans your ears with your phone's camera to tune the audio for your ears. Yeah, it's as crazy as it sounds and you feel like a total dog doing the whole setup. But after you do, you do get like a noticeable change with spatial audio. Okay, FaceTime and iMessages also got big updates this year. With iMessages, you can now edit or delete a message after you've sent it for like 15 minutes. Yeah, the thing with this though is everyone needs to be on iOS 16 for this to work. Yeah, so gotta wait until at least September. And with FaceTime, you can now hand off between your devices, which is so nice. You could already do this with audio, but now it works over video as well. Like I cannot remember how many times I have to end the call on my phone just to reconnect later on the iPad. This is gonna be so good. And as an added bonus, your AirPods will also switch seamlessly to the other device. Okay, live captions are also coming to FaceTime, which is huge. And this is actually system level, so you can have captions literally everywhere. Okay, now I want to take a moment to address the bugs and stability of the beta, because there's both good and bad. The good news is that all the third-party apps work perfectly on the beta, like no crashes or anything like that. But the not so good part is that the system has a lot of bugs. Yeah, there's a good amount of crashes when using the new features like the lock screen and subject separation. Not to mention that it runs particularly hot while using these. Like it gets pretty warm to the touch. Yeah, and there's some other bugs like the volume levels, RAM management, and the usual battery drain, but nothing major. It's definitely usable if you don't mind the crashes or the heat but it does feel like a bit more unstable than previous versions. So let me know in the comments if you're gonna hop on the beta or if you're already on it or will you wait till September for the official release? Also, what are you most excited for in iOS 16? I'm definitely all about the new lock screen. Drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.